Hello Rays thanks for the work you do for us, I have a problem I want to share with you and your listeners for some advice, my dad regularly raped me when I was 11 and I liked it, but shouldn't I feel traumatized now that I'm an adult? Well this is seriously tricky, let's see what our listeners have to say, Marcus says please note this is just my opinion and like buttholes most stink but some do not. For some this may trigger something and it's that you stop now if you don't then do not blame me. This post will be plain spoken with word that may not be suitable for some. You're right in the fact the law says it would be rape as you were too young yo give consent. The head doctors and want to be head doctors will have all kinds of things to say as how wrong it is. But ultimately it's not their say it's yours. Don't forget that. What it comes down to is how you feel about it and how it may have changed your outlook on life. A lot of people will try to tell how wrong it was, and it may have been, and how you should feel about it. I can only tell you from personal experiences how it was for me and it's just the opinion from someone who went through all types of things so take what you can use and discard the rest. One thing to remember is what you tell a professional or the clergy is not private by law they must report any abuse that is going on or if they feel it may happen again or if you may self-harm. If you ask a professional about what they must report and they do not give you a precise answer then run do not walk run away. A lot of them will try to underplay what they must do by law. The rule of thumb is to never give names, dates, times, places or anything that can be used to identify others. That is of course if you are not looking to get others in trouble. If that's not the case then give as much detail as possible to be used to put those who harmed you in jail. Personally, even when I talk about crap on this site I do not give enough detail to be used in court. Those who I do give enough information on are no longer alive so it does not matter. But that's your call not mine or anyone's it's solely yours as it should be. Many will disagree with me on that. When I realized I needed to change the way I thought and try to deal with some of the crap I went through as a kid the professional folks tried to tell me that it was all bad. Every single part of it was bad. Well that set up a major problem as conflicts and confusion were now in my brain. If it was all bad then sex was bad and the good feeling I had were bad and I must have been bad for liking part of it. Yes it may not have been my fault but what about the times I asked for it? or the times I instigated sex with others? That sets up a conflict in your brain and can really screw you up. It did for me but that's how the professionals did it back in my day. I did know I needed to change how I looked at things as I was going down the path as my mom had. Maybe not the same way but nonetheless I did not look at sex with those who should not be having sex as wrong. Here's the best advice I ever got and it was not from a professional but someone like myself who had gone through similar things as I did. He told me to look at every single thing or time something happened to me or that I did and decide if I liked it or hated it or was it just okay and why. Did I like it because it felt good or because I was told I would like it or because I was trying to please someone. The why was important very important. Why I liked it. Why I hated it. Did I hate because it hurt or was forced or because of who it was? The why is important. Then to look at how it changed how I thought because everything that happened changes how you look at things. All that sounds easy but trust it's not. It can hurt to look at all of it and it change how you look at things. Just about the time you think you have it you realize that you have lied to yourself. You must be honest with yourself about it or it will not work. The first person you lie to is yourself that's just how it goes. It's hard because as you work through things the core values you have will change and your brain will go to extreme lengths to protect those core values. Plus you have to replace those core values with new ones. You will need a good support group of people that you can talk to that will not judge you. That is very hard to find. But is so very important to have and you need to have that as you start your journey. With all that said I can very much understand where you are coming from. My mom started my sex life out when I was 18 months with my older brother. I was born to be a boy toy for my mom and my older brother. 
Being a boy I could not get pregnant and back then it was common for boys to explore and experiment with each other. In fact many parents encouraged it as getting some poor girl pregnant was about the worst thing that a boy could do. So I was getting fucked by my brother from the time I could remember. Do I blame him? No he was doing what he had been told and shown to do. Was it always great having him fuck my multiple times a day? Sometimes. Did he do things that caused me pain? Yes at times he sure did. Do I hate him? No because overall we loved each very much and most of the time he was very gentle and caring. I may hate some of what he did at times but not him. I was born to be a boy toy for mom and my older brother so sex for me was a daily thing. Yes I could have let the things mom made me do control my life but I decided I was not going to do that. Mom even got involved with a religious cult that believed in having sex with kids. She traded and loaned and sold my body as she pleased. I was a boy toy for her family and was used often. My mom made sick just to get attention and caused me to have major issues growing up but she used that too, to her advantage. The things that had to be done just to keep me alive was a workhouse but mainly for my brother. The enemas after every meal, the acid in my poop that could give me a chemical burn. Not being able to wear clothes because they would break me out in hives and make it hard for me to breathe requiring shots just to keep from swelling up so bad you couldn't recognize me. Going naked everywhere because I couldn't wear clothes. Oh yes so much fun. Yes some was pure hell like when she sent me with pornographers at 5 and up. But then some was not so bad and some felt good while some I really liked. So no the talking heads can sat what they want. They are not mean nor did they go through the things I did nor were they raised as I was. So it's my right to say how I felt about each individual thing that happened. For someone to tell me how I should feel? Well bend your ass over and I'll butt fuck you dry till you drop then you might have the right to say hi to me. Mom never if at all possible let me get fucked dry. My point is so many people including myself, yes I do it too, want to tell you what to think and how to feel. But the reality of it is only you can say how you feel and what it was like for you. If you liked it great if not great it's sure call not mine nor anyone else's. The hardest part is being brutally honest with yourself about it. For me if I liked the feelings it gave me then I liked it. If I did not then I did not. But it's sure call not mine or anyone's. I do wish the best of luck and hope you find the answers you're looking for. May you be blessed and have a great day, month and years to come. Another Leisner Jane as says you were young, it happened to you. Your body and your mind scrambled themselves to you having to like it a little more and hurt a little less every time it happened. I mean what were you supposed to do? Tell someone, do you think they'll believe you even you're just a child? Your body wanted to survive and your mind did to so, it decided you have to learn to like it, and learn to not have it destroy you. Pleasing someone with your body is all you knew what to do at the time, all you knew was how to use your hands mouth and body, because the man that taught you was your life teacher. A parent teaches you how to survive life, you just used what he taught you and had to learn to like it so you could survive the horrid face of humanity. Sometimes when faced with sexual trauma someone becomes hypersexual to cope with it, even with the ironic behavior, how else could you cope? Sex was all you knew to rely on at the time? The last message from Nancy says you don't have to feel any way someone else tells you. I was raised by my dad in a consanguineous family, we still live together and I absolutely love the hot life we've had. Well you too can share your view in the comments section below.